today we are back inside age of empires mobile because a lot of you guys have been asking me both in game and in comments what the different stats do here in age of empires mobile and i've also gotten a lot of questions about talents here for your heroes and so we're going to be covering both of those things in today's video but first what's going on guys cheers before we begin i currently have the second highest power in my starting zone here in kingdom 64 which is the special event server for the path to the imperial city event i announced the event on the channel and so I'll give you guys an update on that event later in this video but I do want to remind you guys that it's going on and that this video is sponsored by Age of Empires Mobile so if you haven't tried the game yet use my link down below and give the game a try it's 100 free and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video okay let's quickly go over the different stats here in Age of Empires Mobile now there are stats for your heroes and there are stats for your troops I think a lot of people have been asking me questions mainly about the stats for your heroes which you can discover if you click on these three horizontal lines in this little icon down here and you'll see that there are four attributes for every single hero in the game it's the same four attributes you have might you have armor you have strategy and you have siege and i've had a lot of people asking me specifically about strategy okay and we'll talk about that in today's video but with every given commander you can see what they excel at by looking at which one is in gold so obviously the highest stat for my richard is his might and that is the one that is in gold if we take a look at my leonidas that's the same thing we take a look at barbarossa his armor is actually his highest stat or i guess i should say attribute because i don't want to confuse you guys with the actual stats in the game which are found on your troops if you go into your troop training buildings no matter which troop type you look at you could tap that same attribute icon right here and you could see stats for these units you have the power of the unit which that does add to the power of your account like your entire city which is an indication of how strong that tier of unit is so right now this is a tier four swordsman you'll get tier five swordsman it's got a higher power okay but other than that i don't really think power does anything other than just give you an idea as to how strong that unit is but we have attack defense health load and speed and if you guys have played other city builder or kingdom builder games in this genre these stats will look very familiar to you now at the time of me recording this video i do not know the battle formula to this game i don't know anyone who does if you do please reach out to me over on discord i don't think that the developers of the game are ever going to release their battle formula that tends to be a proprietary formula that the game developers tend to want to keep secret that way players can't exploit it but historically in games similar to age of empires mobile attack will help with scaling how much damage you do to the enemy defense will help with mitigating damage that you take from your enemy and health is the amount of damage that your troops can take before they become either a dead unit and they show up as losses or they become gravely wounded units as well now while we're looking at this battle report here with this level 15 tribe this is a good time for me to tell you guys what the different things are on the battle report themselves so as i just said losses are literally troops that you lose in a battle they are killed on the battlefield and you cannot heal them they're just gone they're dead you have to retrain more units if you want to replace the ones that die on the battlefield gravely wounded units are the units that actually go to your hospital which you can find in your city so right now i have a level 20 hospital and you can see that it is currently empty but there is a hospital capacity here of 150,000 units this goes up depending on the level of your hospital and military technology so what this means is i can sustain up to 150,000 gravely wounded units before my hospital is overflowing and if i get more gravely wounded units than 150,000, those that would be gravely wounded turn into losses they turn into dead troops so you never want to overfill your hospital okay it's very important if you're in a big war don't overfill your hospital you're going to be losing way more troops than you need to it's much better to heal troops than it is to retrain troops okay and then finally we have lightly wounded units these are units that are hurt on the battlefield and they will no longer be able to fight in that battle but as soon as you retreat back to your city those lightly wounded units are immediately available to go fight out on the battlefield once again you simply have to deploy them in a new army so if we're going to oversimplify this just so you guys have an understanding the higher your attack the more wounded units you're going to deal to your enemy the higher your defense the more damage you're going to mitigate that is being dealt to you by your enemy the higher your health 
health the less likely your troops are to die from that damage your load is how much you can gather out in the world okay so if you send an army to gather wood or food or anything like that the higher your load the more you can carry which is very nice but not very relevant for fighting and then finally we have speed and this is how fast your troops are on the battlefield and what you're going to notice is that speed actually does not change with the tier of unit okay speed stays the same the only troop type that changes speed is cavalry and that's of course because they're on horses and so cavalry are the fastest units in the game which is definitely an advantage that they have finally we have extra elimination rates I currently do not have any of this stat so I can't say for sure but if you just tap on it it says increasing this attribute causes you to eliminate more enemy units that's really strong but now that we understand the different attributes for your units and you have a rough idea as to what they might be doing on the battlefield let's take a look at the attributes for your heroes because this is the thing that I get a lot of comments on from you guys on YouTube and over in game might is probably the most common attribute that you hear at the beginning of age of empires mobile, because a lot of the early game heroes deal damage based off of their might. If we take a look at my Richard, it says deals might damage to up to three nearby enemy troops with a, with a certain damage rate increases damage based on the current number of mark of the Lionheart stacks that has to do with the, the signature skill here. I'm not going to go into the weeds, but basically all you need to know is that the higher the might of Richard the more damage that you're going to deal with this commander skill the might of the hero scales the damage that this skill does and likewise if we take a look at Leonidas his signature skill says when you're hit with a normal attack there's a chance to deal might damage okay so you can conclude that the higher your might the more might damage you will deal the way that I like to think of might in my mind is physical damage if you've ever played Pokemon I know this is going to be a bit of a weird parallel to draw but I'm sure all of you that are watching are in your 30s and so you've probably played Pokemon at some point okay let's be real all right might is like physical damage okay think about I mean it's literally a picture of a hand with a sword it's how much physical damage you can hit with somebody okay armor is sort of the other side of that coin and it makes sense logically there's a shield armor is the amount that you can resist might damage okay and if you tap here it says every point of armor increases might defense of units whereas if you tap on might it says every point in might increases might attack of units okay and so might and armor are basically inverses of one another the more might you have the more might damage you can deal and the more armor you have the less might damage you will take okay very self-explanatory stuff so in other words if an enemy Richard was on the battlefield and they were attacking me if I had more armor for my army then you're going to take less might damage from that Richard which is nice that's kind of why Barbarossa is pretty cool he's a nice little tank unit here in the pikeman lineup that I shared with you guys in my video where we talk about the best heroes if you haven't seen that video go ahead and check it out I know a lot of people found it very useful but then we come to strategy and a lot of people have been asking me about strategy and they're curious as to what this means because again a lot of the early game commanders talk about might so you know what might is but you don't see a lot of commanders with strategy but I can assure you there are many commanders in the game that deal strategy damage for example we have Philip the fourth and Sun Tzu are two great examples of strategy damage heroes you can see that Sun Tzu's commander skill deals strategy damage to the targets and enters the ultimate strategist state we're not going to go too far into what Sun Tzu himself does but you can see that strategy is his highest stat okay and again if we tap on it it says every point of strategy increases the strategy attack and strategy defense of the units by 0.15 percent for skills with strategy bonus every point to strategy increases the skill effectiveness by 0.3 percent so in this way and I'm going to draw this parallel back to Pokemon okay if you remember in generation one that's Pokemon red blue and yellow you had attack defense and you had special do you guys remember special that stat your special stat was both the amount of damage you would deal and the amount of damage that you would resist from special moves so in those games psychic type moves were considered special okay and so Mewtwo for example would deal a ton of psychic damage because his special was so high and also you really couldn't deal any sort of special damage to Mewtwo he was very tanky because that special stat was so high now in future games in Pokemon they actually split that into special attack and special defense just to sort of balance things out a little bit better but here in Age of Empires Mobile strategy serves as both the offensive and defensive stat for strategy damage so it is effectively both the might and the armor for strategy related damage okay so I hope that makes sense 
it functions just like might and just like armor all in one stat okay and then finally we have siege and the way that i understand this is that heroes with a high siege stat will deal more damage to city fortifications than heroes with a lower siege stat so to give you guys an example this is one of the level five cities that we've captured with my alliance here the city of nobility and you can see that the city has a gate around it okay and in order to siege a city you have to first destroy the gate or the walls and then you can go into the city and destroy the city center and when you do so like let's say for example you launch a rally which is what i would recommend you do you would rally this city gate and the city gate will have some number of troops that are garrisoning that gate once you're done killing off the garrison troops you will then start to attack the actual walls themselves you will be reducing the durability of that city's gate same thing with the actual structures within the city if you rally the city of nobility you're going to kill the garrison troops first and then you'll start to destroy the durability of that building okay and it is my understanding that the siege stat of your heroes will determine how effective they are at destroying the durability of the buildings or the walls but I don't think and I'm gonna give credit to Sigarm here on YouTube who is a very proficient player in Age of Empires mobile I have messaged them a ton asking clarifying questions on how the game works they also have a YouTube channel you can go ahead and subscribe to them as well very very informative videos but it's my understanding based on what he said that siege does not have an effect on how much damage you deal to the garrisoned troops but only affects how good you are at destroying the durability now that still matters a lot right the ability to burn down enemy cities faster is very good but I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression and think that stacking a ton of siege means you're going to be killing tons of your enemies troops all with a single rally I don't think that's how this works okay so now that we've gone over the attributes for your troops and your heroes let's take a look at some of the choices that I've made for talents here and some things that you guys should keep a look for okay now the first thing and this is a big warning your talent trees will vary depending on your hero okay this is a big deal I was very confused by this for example if we take a look at Miyamoto Miyamoto is a military specialty swordsman and if we take a look at King Derek same thing military specialty he's also a swordsman but if we take a look at their talents they're actually a bit different so if we look at King Derek's talent tree for example and we come down here to intrepid warrior off to the right here there's this talent called gather resources and it says increases resource gain by five percent after a successful gathering which I was confused about because if we take a look at Miyamoto's talent build the layout of all the skills and everything looks identical but if you tap on it it's actually just reduces damage taken from normal attacks there's nothing about gathering here at all all, which is very different so the one tip I want to give you guys is even though the talent trees might look the same the specific icons might be a little bit different and even though they're in the same places they might do different things so always read this talents before you put your talent points into a hero to make sure you're getting what you actually want but now that we understand the different attributes of your heroes we can make some more informed decisions as to what talents we might want to grab as we're going through the tree now some things are unavoidable right you can't not put points in these first few talents because you won't actually unlock the rest of the talent tree so some of these points are non-negotiable this one commander's damage you only have to put one point here i believe before you can start branching off into other things i think this one only takes five points five prior points to unlock so you can do one two three four five you only need a single point here but eventually you'll probably come back to this because commander damage by 0.6 percent is actually pretty good you don't have to get it right away but one thing I'll point out here is that a lot of what I do for myself is focus on dealing the most amount of damage okay it's a very simple concept I'm a simple guy I see more damage I think that's got to be the best choice okay and again I want to be very clear we don't know the battle formula for the game the game is very new right and so I'm still learning and so I'm not going to sit here and tell you that like this is the best talent build because I, I I can just go off of what I understand from this game and other city builder games but in general what I've discovered and again you want to read the talent specifically but in general it seems like the left half of the talent tree right the left half whether you're here or you're down here or whatever the left half seems to lean a little bit towards dealing more damage whereas the right side of the talent tree seems to lean a little bit more towards mitigating damage okay and what do I mean by this well 
we tap here it says increases commander damage okay if we tap here it says reduces damage taken all right let's take a tap here increases commander's normal attack damage all right what's this reduces troops damage taken from normal attacks and so they're kind of a mirror of one another right one is dealing more damage one is reducing damage taken and when I think about what does Miyamoto do as a as a hero what do I want from him well you look at his skills he wants to deal as much damage as possible right and so I'm gonna min max that I'm not gonna try and make him a super tanky build because his armor is okay but really his might is where he shines and that's what's gonna deal a lot of damage and so I want to amplify his highest stat right his highest stat is his might his skills deal a lot of damage and so the highest priority for me is to kind of go with the flow just do what he is best at and that is dealing damage okay now the difference here is normal attack damage this is the amount of damage that you're dealing every turn right every turn you're going to be dealing damage with one of your heroes and that is the damage that you're going to be dealing normal attack damage then you have and we're going to come here we have skill damage okay and this is the amount of damage you deal with the skills of your heroes and that makes sense and these are your skills by the way the right in the bottom right corner I talked more about these in my commander guide video so again check that out but as you can see this is a commander skill this is a signature skill this is a customizable skill and you can see here it says more skills and so it is pretty self-evident that the amount of damage that you're going to deal with these is going to be amplified by getting talents that increase the damage of your skills okay and so what I try to do for Miyamoto is the first priority is dealing damage okay so there's things that just deal commander damage I don't know if this is all sources of damage I haven't tested this but really you can't avoid this anyway so you have to grab it I think that Miyamoto deals a lot of his damage with his skills and so if you're going to prioritize one over the other I would say probably skill damage but I'm going to be honest with you guys you're going to have enough talent points to grab all sources of damage for pretty much all heroes throughout this entire tree okay so I focus on getting as much damage as possible and then you'll see over here that we have increases the hero's might by three now you remember earlier in the video we talked about what might is and that scales again more damage okay more damage is good if we come down here oh okay we have hero strategy well if we remember that Miyamoto deals damage based off of his might well then we don't really need strategy for Miyamoto now this isn't to say that strategy is useless because remember strategy actually mitigates strategy damage as well it actually does two different things so strategy points aren't useless on Miyamoto but when you think about in the early game how many heroes are dealing strategy damage it's really not that many so in the early game I think if you're not dealing strategy damage you probably don't want strategy base points it, it's you're really only going to get half of the value out of them whereas you know with might you're going to get a full value out of that now another tip I want to give you guys is that these big talents in the center okay there's one for each of these different branches I guess these these are some of the most important talents to get so as soon as you're able to unlock these you want to get it okay this is might damage by four and a half percent that's way more than any other talent that we have here on the talent tree strength in numbers gives you the bonus to your attributes for having heroes of the same specialty which is very good and the bonuses increase with the number of heroes that share that military specialty so very good stuff here okay here we have again increases the damage of the hero's active skills by 10 percent so quick tip if you can unlock these big ones get them as soon as possible they're going to make the biggest difference besides that if it's a hero that's focused on dealing damage which most of the heroes in the other game are try to stick to the left side of the tree and then if you have more points to fill out then you can start to grab things off on the right like reduces the damage taken these are still good things you definitely want to take less damage when you can but if we come over here like for example hero armor is this useless no actually this is this is pretty decent because you're going to be mitigating the might damage you take and there's a lot of might damage heroes out there but again would I rather reduce the might damage I take or deal more might damage if we look at Miyamoto he's much more focused on dealing damage than mitigating damage and so you want to amplify what he's already good at okay it's called min maxing if you've played other RPGs or anything like that you're familiar with that so again it's not that this is useless but I'd much rather grab the might point and then down here we have siege and again this is just for reducing the durability of buildings if you have heroes that aren't made specifically for that then you don't really need to worry too much about putting siege points in them at least from what what I've seen so far throughout the server as you go down here you're going to see the trend continues with the left part of the tree increasing commander damage here we have more might points okay whereas you have again armor siege and strategy you can kind of ignore those for the might damage heroes but now we have things like gathering speed do I care about this for Miyamoto no I don't I'm not really going to be gathering with him ever so that doesn't matter over here we have 
troops attack while gathering do i care about that no i don't i'm not going to be gathering with him so you can skip those points and as you go through you're going to notice that there's a lot of things you can safely skip with heroes like miyamoto because you don't really care about it here we have damage while attacking tribes now tribes are the pve or player versus environment content so that's literally just the like that's just these like tribes out in the world okay this is the pve content in the game do i care about dealing more damage to these tribes maybe later down the line i'll care about it for events but for right now i'm really focused on dealing more damage to other players because personally well first of all if you have more normal da attack damage you're going to be dealing more damage to the tribes right like just straight up but also I am not running into any problems defeating tribes right now. Tribes are extremely easy for me to defeat. And so I don't need any extra help here. And later down the line, I'm sure there's going to be heroes that you get your hands on that you're going to focus on for defeating tribes. But most of the heroes in the early game are not going to be that you just want to spec them for the most amount of might damage or strategy damage or something along those lines and so if you see something that has to do with gathering or for defeating tribes or something then you really don't need to take that right it's not that important and so make sure as you're going through here you're looking for what you really care about now sometimes there will be things that are you can't really avoid it right like you might you might have to get a bonus to a stat that you don't really care about as much just to progress through the talent tree luckily right now it looks like for my Miyamoto I haven't had to do that but like I showed you before with King Derek, there are some talent points that you might grab by accident and you don't really need. So for example, this one, I had to get the extra resource gathering if I wanted to get the extra normal attack damage. It's just the way that these are ordered. Unfortunately, there's no way to avoid this right now. I could have avoided it maybe by putting the points somewhere else, but really like some of these talent builds or talents on King Derek aren't avoidable. And that's just unfortunate that's the reality of this troop here we have when gathering troops are defeated reduces gravely wounded rate again like this is not good like for pvp content like you know it it's just doesn't worth it's not worth investing a point in that right same thing like right at the beginning of his tree increased gathering speed you can't avoid it you have to get it so there's some instances where like you're probably going to get a talent point here or there that you don't love but for the most part all you need to know is that if it's a hero that scales off of might damage and you can tell that that's really what they care about because that's their highest stat then go for things that deal more damage in their talents if they're a hero like maybe Barbarossa who is more so focused on being tanky then maybe you can go for more of the tanky talents his skill literally scales off of an armor bonus right and so if you're going to be building his talent tree maybe you do want to go and look for more points for armor now I've gone all in on damage right because I'm just a lunatic but if I were to redo this right and it's worth noting that I put these talent points here probably on launch day right so I was still learning you can always reset this okay now right now it looks like it costs 50 empire coins to do a hero reset I don't know if there's going to be maybe a hero reset item that shows up later down the line I'm not sure it might be in the game already and I just haven't found any but you guys can let me know in the comment section below if you've been playing a little bit longer and you've had hero reset items come along but if not then it's 50 empire coins you can reset the talent build if you've really messed something up and you can go from there what I would recommend is you know unless you're like about to go into war don't worry about resetting your talents just go ahead and try to make as best choices as you can moving forward and then once you learn a bit more about the game and you're about to go into a war for example then you can go in and start to reset some of the heroes that you really care about and make sure you get the best talents for them now the last thing I'll talk about here is passive versus active skills for those of you that aren't familiar with the distinction here some talents will say heroes passive skills versus active skills if you come into a hero's skill you can see the type of skill right here there's a little icon okay if I tap on that you'll see what type of skill it is so this Lionheart skill on Frederick is actually a passive skill. You can see that, that that's the icon right here. So it's activated automatically under certain conditions, but the active skills have this sort of helmet with a triangle behind it. I don't know how else to describe it, but it says that there's a chance for it to be activated each time the hero takes action. What you'll find is that pikemen have lots of passive skills because they deal damage based on like counterattacks and things like that. But if we come back to Miyamoto, you'll see that his signature skill is an active skill. Okay. And so if there are talents that scale the damage of active skills it will not work for talents such as Richard's Lionheart because that is not an active skill is a passive skill okay so pay attention to that you don't want to accidentally get you know a bunch of damage to active skills and you don't have any active skills that's kind of pointless but in general like these talents will kind of you know be sort of skewed towards what the hero is already good at so it's 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 not super easy to mess this stuff up in a massive way the game sort of has logic to it 
in that it you know it won't really like give you a way to branch off into the completely wrong direction in general you'll be pretty close to the center line and you'll get a lot of things that do actually matter now if you made it to the end of the video let's just do a quick recap so far for the path of the Imperial City event if we take a look at the ranking by power I'm currently ranked 35 on the entire server and we have some insane players in the top like I would say top five top 10 are absolutely ridiculous okay let's see where the other content creators are at the time of recording this video we have Chiskel at number 20 who is just beating me out by about 5 million power we have myself at rank 35 then we have Mr Sneaky coming in close at a 37 now Mr Sneaky and I have kind of been passing one another back and forth he is in a different time zone as me so when I'm sleeping he passes me in power and then when I wake up I pass him in power and he goes to bed and so it's been like this back and forth thing in my region in Eastland I am number two number one is my boy Sharpie who's actually in my Alliance 1 OF just absolutely popping off we have some really good presence in my zone in terms of the strongest players here we actually have three alliances one of them is a little a little inactive at the time of recording this so I'm gonna have to do some consolidation but we could you could see that my alliance kind of dominates a lot of the top slots here on the leaderboard we have some members of ASU which is Mr Sneaky's Alliance and HZ1 so really nice presence from my alliance here in the region if we take a look at alliances by power we see Chiskel's main alliance in Tanir is the strongest power alliance in the entire server by a pretty healthy margin which is kind of scary in second place we have grudge bearers which actually are not related to any of the content creators on this server then we see Chiskel's smash squad fills up ranks three four five and six before you see Omni fans which is my alliance at number seven and we have mr sneaky coming in at number nine so really we've I we have a very good presence on this server the community has been very cool on the server I've really enjoyed it so far I've been having a lot of fun and of course you know like I said earlier this video is sponsored by Age of Empires Mobile so if you guys haven't played Age of Empires Mobile yet I highly recommend you do so the game is 100 free there's going to be a link down below to download it and if you want to play with me I am on server 64 it is Empire 64 and that's where the special event for the path to the Imperial City is occurring and I've had a lot of you guys ask me questions about what happens after this event right this event technically ends by crowning the king of the server at the center of the map and players are wondering what happens after well once there's an alliance that captures King's land and captures the Imperial City then they will be the winner of the event but the server is going to continue on the event might be over but the server will continue as server 64 right and so if you want to join a server with a massive community already and one that will likely continue to be healthy beyond this actual event then you should join server 64 if you haven't given the game a try yet this is a great server to join the community has been very nice I think a lot of people have been organized with how we sort of set up the server and control the different zones which is very cool so I highly recommend you guys try out the game and if you want to play with me me. server 64 is the way to go I am like I said earlier in Eastland which is the sort of right corner of the map over here the passes to Hayuno and to East Kingsland are opening within this week so by the time you're watching this video I may be controlling another zone or I may be burned completely to the ground so stay tuned to find out what happens next in the path of the Imperial City event but with all that being said guys hopefully you found this video helpful useful informative or entertaining and if you did drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other age of empires mobile players might see it while you're down there if there's anything that i missed about hero stats or troop attributes or anything like that put it in the comment section below i'm still learning just like you guys so any information helps a ton if there's anything else you want to learn about age of empires mobile put it in the comment section and maybe i'll make a video about it in the future and of course if you don't want to miss those videos make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload another one and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace